Good morning, brothers, sisters, and Church of the Living God. Hello, hi. I um <clears throat> as you can see our president here in this video. Um we're gonna be watching this. Uh I was sent um I was sent this this two part video. We're gonna watch this of our president, Kamala Harris. Um who is a Jesuit, Jesuit train. Now, those of you who are in the know, Jesuits yourselves and coadjutors, you might be quick to say, well, there are no female Jesuits. Well, you're partly right in that, as you well know yourselves, but um, the Jesuit order will use women. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you are looking at a Jesuit, Jesuit trained woman, our president, Kamala Harris. Never mind smoking joke. He's just the front man. Kamala Harris, she's the one who the Jesuits have put in charge. Satan has allowed that. Why? Because President Kamala Harris is a judgment on to we Americans. Okay? But I want to read to you a portion of scripture. Now, there's going to be several links in this video. Um, there's going to be a documentary on the Jesuit order that you will be able to see. I'm going to put that in there in another video, Jesuit Secrets Revealed. And I'm also going to be putting three Wikipedia links in the um, description box that were given to me. Uh, our president, Kamala Harris, uh, went to University of California, San Francisco. Links are going to be in the description box, okay? And guess what? University of California is a what? <laughs> is a Jesuit university, okay? <laughs> it is a Jesuit university. Yes, yes, yes. Jesuit University is University of San Francisco. It's a Jesuit university. And there is a individual in this who our president, Kamala Harris, uh, address, addresses. His name is Stephen Privet. Who is the Stephen Privet? The Reverend Stephen Arena Privet, S.J. Society of Jesus. <laughs> San Francisco, California is a Roman Catholic priest and member of the Society of Jesus. Father Privet was the 27th president of the University of San Francisco. Yes, University of San Francisco. <laughs> and here I'm going to double check this. Um, Jesuit. Universities. There we go. Yes, yes. Hmm. Yes. But nonetheless, Kamala Harris is just what train, dear people. Okay, but I want to read to you a little portion of scripture here. Turn in your authorized version to Isaiah chapter 3. See, God has allowed the Jesuits to put Kamala Harris in charge. You, you might be saying, well, Smoking Joe's the president. Yeah, yeah. I bet you sooner or later, Smoking Joe is going to do something so crazy that they're going to get him out of there and put in the one who they want president, who they've wanted president from the beginning, Kamala Harris, okay? All right? If not in this term of Smoking Joe, definitely the next term. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, you're looking at the next president of the United States, Kamala Harris, okay? but. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 15. 
And keep this in mind for our country here in America, my fellow Americans. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. Uh, Isaiah chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 15. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom, they hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. The Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What meaneth ye? that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, sat the Lord of hosts. So, let us go ahead and give this a gander. Okay, this is two parts. So, let's take a listen. Well, good afternoon. Father of that, members of the Board of Trustees, executives, officers, faculty of the college, distinguished alumni, and the family and loved ones. Please join me in congratulating the graduate students in the Colleges of Arts and Sciences and the Massagun Graduate School of Management, and let us please yet again put our hands together in celebration of the University of San Francisco class of 2009. Universe, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Okay, look at that. Um, I think that's at San Francisco Church, but um, uh, San Francisco University is is a Jesuit university, dear friends. Okay, okay. But remember, she said about the arts and science. You know, the Jesuits getting into the uh, higher, upper echelons of things. Remember, okay? Yeah. Sorry to subject you to this, by the way. So believe me, I know what a graduation ceremony means to a family, and especially to the parents out there. And I want to thank each and every one of you for the honor of allowing me to share in this very important day. The University of San Francisco has always held a very special place in my heart. The air, of course, is so fresh up here on the hilltop. And I can tell you that many a day, I found sanctuary on this campus. Um, because you see, I was just out of law school, and it was here at USF that I studied for the bar exam. And unfortunately, I remember those days like they were yesterday. Uh, my friends would come up here with me to Lone Mountain and basically speak cloister, and sitting day after day at those long wooden tables on those hard back chairs in that dimly lit library. Doesn't that kind of, kind of sound reminiscent of um, self-penance, in a way, of what Catholics have to go through, you know, <laughs> supposedly? <laughs> uh, just wanted to comment on that. It felt like we were doing penance for some serious sin. <laughs> and you can believe me. I have not watched this until right now. <laughs> She's Jesuit trained. We have a, pre a Jesuit president. Oh, no, it's, it's Smoking Joe. Ah, be quiet. This is the this is the one who the Jesuits want to run the country. This is the one who is running the country, people. There was a whole lot of praying going on, and thankfully our prayers were answered. And so, graduates, 
In this moment of pomp and circumstance, allow me to address the circumstances of this afternoon. I know the job market is on the minds of families everywhere. It is true whether you received your MBA or your MFA, whether you are in the field of risk management or sports management. The world today is a very different place than the day you applied to graduate school. Now think about that. Now this was in what, 2009? Now think about today. Remember the Black Pope Arturo Sosa said about how with the coronavirus, which they put out there, um, that the world cannot go back to what it once was, okay? Okay? Now, granted, this was in 2009. She is giving an address to all these Jesuit-trained people <laughs> to go out and conquer the world for the greater glory of God. Ab majorium de glorium. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder... If Miss Harris knew back in 2009 that she was going to be elevated to be the very first president, female president of the United States of America. Because uh, Billary, look, Billary, see, America was not ready for Billary, okay? Uh, it wasn't. But now, with Black Lives Matter and all this stuff that's been going on, Okay, and feminism being raised up, elevated to uh, insane heights nowadays. Um, my countrymen here in America are ready for this. And you might be saying, sitting there, oh, Brad, you're being sexist. Remember, I... In the authorized version, scripture believer, I believe the scriptures, okay? And according to the scriptures, okay, it is God, man, woman, children, okay? Get over that, you feminists out there. Get over that, okay? That is the way it is, okay? But see, feminism, God. Woman, child, pet, man. Okay? That's how it is onto the feminist. And when you search the scriptures, okay? Yeah, there was queen, the queen of Sheba. But also in the scriptures, Queen Athaliah. And look what happened to Queen Athaliah. You look those things up on your own, okay? God did not intend for a woman to be a leader in such a capacity. Prove me wrong. And when one was put up, it was for judgment. And, in, for example, Queen Athaliah didn't last that long, did she? And also, remember Jezebel, who was ruling her husband, and basically running the country of Israel in the back scene, scenery of things. So smoking Joe, Zahab, Kamala Harris. Let's continue. Just think of the transformations we've witnessed in the last year alone. The global crisis has accelerated the pace of historic changes in our economy. Entire markets have been fundamentally reorganized, and many will never be the same. I know some parents out there are probably losing some sleep these days. Of course, that's only natural. Never be the same. Uh, several years later, later, that's what the Black Pope himself said. After all, worrying is what parents do. But graduates, let me tell you why my money is on you, the class of 2009. First and foremost, you are part of the generation that has already changed the history of our country and the history of the world by making Barack Obama President of the United States.
No other graduated. And in all due time, Kamala Harris, the first woman president who is black. She's Jesuit trained people. class in modern times has entered an environment as challenging as the one we currently find ourselves in. And it is and, and, and very quickly, um, turning your turning your authorized version of the scriptures to Proverbs. Proverbs, Proverbs. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 30. Uh, this generation that's being raised up on their cell phones, desensitized through video game violence, um, uh, being, uh, what is it, feminized through television and stuff like that. Okay? My, my grandson plays that, what is that, Call of Duty, which is desensitizing him to shooting people. Okay? Don't, don't give me this stuff about the video games are harmless. Okay, but Proverbs chapter 30, <clears throat> verses 11 on to verse 15. Proverbs chapter 30, about the generation she's talking about. Proverbs 30, verses 11 on to verse 15. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. Pride. God has been taken out of the equation for the children, the generation of today, long ago. People, okay? There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. And all the while, the horse leech hath two daughters, crying, give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say it is not enough. Here, let's read verse 16. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not it is enough, the eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother. The ravens of the valley, an unclean bird, shall pick it out, and the young eagle shall eat it. Let's continue. It is also true. No other generation has ever been more uniquely prepared to meet the challenge. In fact, to quote President Obama, it's a privilege and a responsibility afforded to few generations and a task that you graduates are now called to fulfill. And so graduates, I'm here to say, I believe in you. We believe in you. In fact, Who's we're going we? to be spending a lot of time trying to catch up with you. Yeah, who's we? Yeah, yeah, who's the we? <laughs> While some of us are still trying to figure out how to pro program that remote, and parents, you know what I'm talking about, these graduates, they can twitter blindfolded with one thumb behind their back. And graduates, you are a generation in constant communication. And believe me, as we watch you, we can see the method to your madness. It has something, I think, to do with an essential principle of management. You understand that organization is power. You understand something else, too. You Did you catch that? Did you catch that about the organization is power? Hmm? Did you catch that? What over what organization? Think about this, people. Think about this. 
you know that the old economic rules are over. Where the old economic rules. Take that a step further. The old pass is over. And a new way. Right? A new way. Like I said, I have not seen this in full. I have not seen this until today. Takes me a while to catch up to the links. Takes me quite a while, but. Whereas the generations before you, new graduates, went out into the workforce to compete with the more senior guy, you know it's no longer a matter of measuring yourselves against more experienced workers in established industries and trades. For you, graduates, in your professional lifetime, success will be a question of defining what is new. Graduates, you can see the generational shift that is transforming our economy. In terms of your skill set... Remember, she's talking about the economy, which is being purposely driven into the ground. But take it its logical step further. Remember, us old, us old farts are the problem. The old way is the problem. Something new. Get it? The new world order, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, which is nothing but a return to the dark ages, okay? <laughs> and your knowledge base in terms of mastering the best practices in the emerging subject matter. It is you who are entering the marketplace ready to lead the way. And graduates, I believe you possess a profound advantage. Okay, and now part two. In you, I see a generation that has rekindled the passion and the energy of the civil rights era. You see, I grew up deep in that passion. My parents met as graduate students marching for civil rights in Berkeley. And growing up, my heroes were okay. the great civil rights lawyers, Charles Hamilton Houston, Constance Baker Motley, Thurgood Marshall. But by the time I graduated from law school, the pendulum had swung back. It was the beginning of the reign of Wall Street, a time when many of our most talented young people were swept up in the pursuit of profit in an era of laissez-faire individualism. But graduates, you understand the lessons we only learned the hard way. You've seen how things can crash when we abandon our moral compass. You've seen how fiscal policies... Moral compass. Moral compass. Very interesting. Very interesting. See, you got to remember, brethren, the Jesuit, the Catholic, their first allegiance is to what? Pope of Rome and the Vatican. Okay? Jesuit disloyalty. It's called the disloyalty teaching. If I can remember, I'll put that video um, in the description box as well. Okay? That's a part two of a two-part video, but, okay, that deals with the facts there. Okay? The Catholic Jesuit, they are loyal onto their superior, the superior general, the head of the order, the Pope, okay, and to the Vatican. The end justifies the means. When they say ad majorium the glorium for the greater glory of God, they're not talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They are actually talking about their little G God, Satan, Lucifer, the devil. You know, the one that they pray to. Uh, uh, oh, Lucifer. Okay. Yes. Yes. Be terrified. 
of this moral compass that our president is talking about. Based on unrestrained greed are neither economically sustainable nor morally acceptable. You've seen... <laughs> and morals can change quite often, can't they, you Jesuits? <laughs> yeah, to fit the circumstance. Yes, your ways are always movable that thou canst not know them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The impact of these policies cascading across billions of human lives around the globe. And you know that a nation's economic success cannot simply be measured by what happens on Wall Street alone. In fact, it's got to be built on Main Street, brick by brick and business by business. Ladies and gentlemen, when I look out at these graduates, I see a group of practical idealists. I see the same generation that came of age as the towers fell on 9-11. I see the same generation that grew up understanding the tragic cost of our hubris in Iraq. I see the same generation that understands the immediacy of our connection to a wider world, a generation that can see the rising tide of climate destruction. Generation that can see. Genesis chapter 3 in your authorized version of the scriptures. Genesis chapter 3. Come on. Wait, what's the problem? Here? Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing Good and evil. You shall be as gods. <laughs> the, the rhetoric that she is using here, the buzzwords, as it were, are just astounding. I mean, they really are. This is it's the first time I've heard this, okay? And her use of the trivial is also very exemplary. Very exemplary. Um, this this woman ought to make the Jesuits very proud. Instilling into their own lives and the lives of our children. I see a generation that won't stand for predatory lending and white-collar crime, not when the American dream is at stake. I see a generation willing to take on the tough fight and the sacred cow. Once and for all, banning military military style assault weapons and reforming our prison system and putting politics aside and fixing our broken budget process. And I know all the world will come to see a generation of believers. Generation of believers? What are they going to be leaving in? Ye shall be as gods. Knowing good and evil. Yeah? What are these, what are they going to be believing in, people? Well, I, I, I guess, I, I, here, let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will all I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. 
yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Believers. Believers in the God of the scriptures? No. The little chick God of this world. Lucifer. Young men and women whose beliefs have been fully formed in that forge of a lived experience. Formed in that forge of a lived experience. Sounds very reminiscent to something in the spiritual exercises of Ignatius of Loyola. Forged in the experience thereof. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. All her sophistry, doublespeak, use of the trivium and rhetoric is a stuff. Bravo to our. President Kamala Harris. Bravo. 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 <laughs> Making the Jesuits proud. And as product of the University of San Francisco, as masters trained in a timeless and the timeless values of the Jesuit tradition. You, you heard that. The Jesuits' tradition. You know, there are those of you out there who like to make small the threat of the Jesuits. And um, you're... Um, uh, what can I say? What can I say? Look at the fruit of their doings. In you, we see the past meeting the future. We see men and women carrying forward the fundamental idea of this great university, the life of the mind and the encounter with the world. It's simply a belief in public service as a duty. Oh, well, like for the common good? <laughs> Which is Catholic? Oh. A basic obligation flowing from our very humanity. An obligation applying equally to everyone at all times. When you're up and when you're down. When it costs you nothing and when it costs a lot. Whether you're the DA or an MBA. Graduates, you know it is that service that is a duty. So this is your time. And remember that times of crisis are also times of great opportunity. Yeah, yeah. this is their time. Uh, this is their hour in the power of darkness. Yeah. Remember the perspective afforded by USF magnificent view and the spirit of St. Ignatius. The life of the mind and the duty to serve. The spirit of St. Ignatius. People! People! This is our president. Never mind Smoking Joe. Okay? He's a front man. Chart your course with these lessons in mind. And get out there. Get your hands dirty. Get it done. Because your country needs you, and we know you can do it. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Look at that! Purple and scarlet! Her colors are purple and scarlet! Okay, did you see that? Huh? Did you see that? Her colors are purple and scarlet, Mystery Babylon the Great? People, people, people. Isaiah chapter 30. You know how it said in the book of Revelation about how the false prophet 
uh, in Revelation 13, he spake as a dragon, a devil. How do devils speak? Isaiah chapter 30, verses 9 on to 11. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. The Holy One of Israel, the God of Jacob, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Yeah. Yeah, you might die. Uh, there are those of you out there it's like, oh Brad, you're just uh, you're just being conspiracy theorist or or you're being sexist. No, 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 brethren, sisters. Well you get you get this, Church of the Living God. You lost people out there. This was in 2009, okay? And now Kamala Harris is president. Okay. Let's okay, let's let's appease you people. She's vice president. While smoking Joe keeps making a you know, befooling himself uh, left and right. Um it's just a matter of time with smoking Joe. If he makes it the full year, a full four years, okay. But brethren, Kamala Harris. Smoking Joe is the front man. Kamala Harris is the one taking the orders from the Jesuits and running the country in the background. Just like Pence did with Trump. Okay. Okay, and I forget who was um uh uh, G, uh, W's vice president, I forget, but uh, uh, Herbert Walker Bush uh, did that for Reagan, okay? The vice president is the one pumping the front man, okay? Because look at Reagan, he was an actor, okay? Okay, and also Bill Clinton, Smoking Joe was the one running the country for him. Okay, no, it wasn't Smoking Joe. For um, for Billy, I forget who I see. I forget these things. Okay, I do my best to forget them. Okay, but and this was two thousand and nine. Wake up, people! See the Jesuit reality that is right outside your doors. We can't stop it. But see, there's one person out there who has not heard, who does not know. Okay? There's one person out there who will not believe unless you give them evidence. Be concerned about that one. That's what I'm concerned about. This one, whoever he or she may be. I don't know how long this video will stay up on YouTube, but uh, you know what happens if I don't try? Nothing. So that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, bye bye.